hello guys in this video we are going to talk about decision trees so what is decision trees so basically it is a natural and an intuitive way to classify a pattern through sequence of questions so let us understand it with an example so this is the old classic example that i've used throughout this series that uh, <clears throat> suppose i want to classify between sunflower and rose so what I have is an image set of images of sunflower and set of images of rose that are my training samples and out of these images I can extract the size that is the distance from the center the size and the luminance of the image so these are the two features that I am extracting from the images so what I have done is I have made a scatter plot such that for every image I can get a size and a luminance that I have plotted over here and uh, we will see how can we separate this data using decision trees. So here X denotes sunflowers and O denotes rows. Okay. So this is the concept of decision trees. First we will see the intuition and then we will see how to uh, implement this algorithm. So the intuition is such that you can choose any of uh, the features. So that is what we will call as the root node. So just uh, see what is the intuition and then I will uh, tell you how to implement this. So um, for, for me as a human, let us see how can we uh, separate this using decision trees. So here you can see that if suppose I take my fe first feature as size. So if suppose I take my first feature as size, I can see that um, over here I have one particular line. If suppose I make this line, then I can see that these features will be distinguished from this. And this is a sunflower. This is because x denotes a sunflower so these are always a sunflower so there is no error in this particular uh, branch and if i look over here so there are both sunflowers and roses over here so if suppose i take my size as the first feature i can get such sort of classification at the first level now if suppose i take luminance as my first uh, first feature if suppose I take luminance here you can see that uh, the it is not very easy to get uh, a good classification over here at the first instance because if I make any line there will be an error on both the sides so whatever line I make there will be an error right so what I do is I'll take size as my first feature so my first feature is size and I will take this line. So this is some my threshold. So I am taking some T1 as threshold. So if this uh, if the samples are greater than T1, if the samples are greater than T1, I will say that it is a sunflower. Because you can see that whenever the samples are greater than T1, I am always getting a sunflower. If the uh, samples are lesser than T1, then I can see that there is a, a probability. There are some sunflowers, there are some rows, right? So I can again divide this into two features. Sorry, into a, uh, into a subtree basically. So I can do that. So what I will use here. So here you can see that suppose if I use luminance. So what will happen is I can draw a boundary like this, which can separate at least all the sunflowers over here. Sorry, all the roses over here at this part and all the sunflower. Uh, so and there are these combination that is left over here. If suppose again, I take my size variable. So here you can see that for size variable things are difficult. So because of this I will go for luminance for the second case. So this is some set T2. So for this threshold if suppose I take luminance over here. 
if suppose i take luminance over here if the samples are lesser than this luminance that means they fall in this region then i will say that they are belonging to rows because all the samples over here are of rows so i will stop and say they are belonging to rows if they are greater then i'll have to do something else because there are two samples over here so now you can see again if suppose i take the size over here and take choose the risk threshold so say this is some uh, t3 so this was for t1 this was for t2 and this is for t3 and i'll take size again so here you can see that now i have perfectly distinguished both the samples so if it is greater than the size if it is greater than the threshold t3 then i will say that it is a rose if it is less than t3 then i'll say it is a sunflower so here you can see how easily i have classified uh, two uh, samples that is sunflower and rose and you can see that this data was actually no, non linearly separable you could not get one line which could separate both the data uh, without error so decision trees has this uh, other advantage also that you can separate non linear data also with uh, decision trees so that was about the intuition now let us see how can we implement this algorithm so let's uh, again just go through this algorithm once so what will happen is if if i choose size as my first variable so i can see i get uh, if this threshold is greater than the size i get all these sunflowers if it is less then i have some mixture of samples so i'll again have to choose some feature if i choose luminance on the second go then i see if i take lesser than the threshold i get all rows but if i take greater i get some mixture so again i took a size threshold and now i can see both of them are well separated so this was for intuition now let us see how can i uh, how can i let the machine do this so i have two questions to answer first how to decide the node feature so how will i decide whether i should take size at uh, in the first place or i should take luminance that is the first question that i'll have to answer second how to decide the threshold how do i come to know what is the value of t1 t2 t3 so these two questions need to be answered so uh, let us first answer this how to decide the node feature so we do that using impurity so what is impurity so you can see over here if suppose i cho choose to this threshold if it was greater than the threshold if any sample light greater than this t1 so i can say that all the features over all the samples over here are of sunflower so this is a pure feature it is purely consisting of sunflower pure feature but if i take less than the threshold t1 then here you can see that uh, there are some thre there are some sunflowers and some some sunflowers and some rose so these are this is impure because there is a mixture in this class uh, so for in this class there is a mixture of samples so these things are called impure so if suppose i get some measure of this impurity if i can measure how much a particular uh, subdivision is pure or impure then i can um, find out uh, which feature vector to take so one of this measure is entropy so what is entropy entropy is basically the measure of uncertainty so here you can see if suppose i take this threshold and uh, i have a t1 over here and if the samples are greater than this t1 i can say with 100% surety 100% surety that it will be a sunflower because there are only sunflower samples over here so i am 100% sure so the probability of uh, being a sunflower in this region is 1 the probability of sunflower in this particular region is 
so here if you see the entropy versus uh, probability graphs so this is for a two case sample so for a two there are only two cases over here sunflower and rose for a two case case sample the entropy graphs look something like this so here you can see if the probability is one i get a zero entropy so for probability one i get zero entropy also if suppose for a particular uh, for a particular sample so here you can see for this particular case i have all rows i have no sunflower so if the probability of sunflower is 1 the probability of rows will be 1 minus p so that is that is over here i can say the probability of sunflower is 0 probability of sunflower is 0 so here you can see even if the probability of that uh, sunflower so here i am just considering of sunflower it is if it is 0 then also i get the entropy as 0 so here you can see if suppose there is a complete classification of a particular class then its entropy will become 0 at that point and if suppose there is no complete uh, classification means if suppose uh, for this class you can see that for this particular class there is uncertainty there are some samples of rose and there are some samples of uh, sunflower and rose whatever so you will get some value of entropy because it is uncertain you can have some samples that are of sunflower and some of rose so for that if the probability is half that is if the probability of being a sunflower and a rose is equal then you will get maximum entropy means highest level of uncertainty you never know what what can happen so according to this logic you will select a feature whose entropy is the minimum because i just want uh, to separate the data very distinguishly right i want uh, a particular case where I get the probability as either 1 or 0 so that all my samples are correctly classified. So hence we can use a measure of impurity as entropy. So what I will do is I will first choose size, <coughs> size feature and check for a particular threshold how much is the entropy that I am getting. So, for uh, how, how to decide the threshold that we will see next. So, if suppose some ma someone magically gives me the threshold, I will see that for this year I can see that I am getting a probability of 1. All the samples are of sunflower. So, the entropy will drop to 0 because for this particular thing all are sunflower. The entropy will drop to 0 and this is the formula of entropy. So, you can put values in this particular formula and get the answer of this graph so for a multi-class case where uh, suppose you have some lilies and all other flowers also you can use this particular formula for uh, all the j's where j's signify so this can be omega 1 this can be omega 2 and uh, all all these so j are tracing this omega 1 and omega 2 and for a two category case so this is a two category case you can use this formula right so by entropy you can see huh so i was telling you if suppose we have size so for this particular case for this side the entropy will be zero and for this side you will get some value of entropy which can be further minimized so you can see after that when i took luminance so here here the entropy became zero and here it has some value right so entropy is one of the measure by which you can uh, select uh, how many sam how, how how select the features how how can you select the features so select the feature which is giving you the minimum entropy so this will be an exhaustive search method you will first have to choose size and see how, how much is the entropy then you'll have to choose luminance and you'll have to see how much is the entropy and then um, uh, compare whichever is the minimum you can take that similarly I can have a, a for a two category case I can have a product of probability so here if you if you see that uh, if suppose instead of uh, taking log and all sorts of thing 
if suppose i just take the product of two probabilities that is if you see suppose when i cut this over here i am at this space here the probability of sunflower is equal to 1 and the probability of probability of sunflower is equal to 1 and probability of rose is equal to 0 at this particular space so if i multiply both of them i will get the answer as 0 because one of them is 0 similarly for a case over here for this region the probability of rose is equal to 1 and probability of sunflower is equal to 0 so if i multiply these probabilities over here i will get the product as 0 so for a two category case uh, this also can be one of the measure that you just multiply the probabilities and see which of them is minimum and you can still find out uh, which uh, which is the best feature to use next people talk, talk about Gini impurity so Gini impurity is basically the, given by this formula and uh, it, it tells, it gives you more stronger peaks at equal probability. So a Gini probability goes somewhat like this. So here you can see it peaks faster. So I, I will tell you what is the advantage of this when I solve this question, answer this particular question, how to decide the threshold. So if a particular thing peaks faster, then uh, it helps in gradient descent. We'll, we'll see in the next uh, next particular when I talk about this. And uh, so this peaks more strongly. So you can use this uh, if you are using the gradient descent, descent approach. And next we have misclassification impurity. Again, this is only valid for a two category case. Again, this is valid only for a two category case. So what does a misclassification impurity do? It is basically this particular formula and um, what happens is uh, it measures the minimum probability that a training pattern would be classified. So it is 1 minus max of all the probabilities. So it is some sort of minimum and it is measuring the probability that the pattern would be misclassified. So hence the name misclassification impurity. So this speaks almost sharply so this is like a discontinuous function it is discontinuous at half so this peaks almost sharply over here so this is the most stronger peak that we have but uh, the derivative of this uh, will not uh, be very easy because uh, this is a discontinuous so this is not a discontinuous but uh, it is having a, a, a so this sort of uh, shape so the derivative is not uh, defined for such functions, right? So that that is a problem. But then you can use this if suppose you don't have to calculate the derivative and do something else, right? So this is what is the misclassification impurity. So that's all for this video. In the next video, I'll, I'm going to show you how can we decide the threshold. So in the next video, I'm going to show you this. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.